Okay guys, and welcome back to the next series of Emmett's Blackboard. So, one, first off, just an apology, I've been on a bit of a hiatus on the videos front for a moment. A lot of exciting projects happening in the background, of which we'll be revealing over the next couple of months, and keep an eye out for them. There's a lot of stuff you're going to enjoy, videos, new website, a bit of everything really. So, doing a topic today which is a bit of a touchy subject for a lot of people but there's probably actually a load of people who've actually just disliked this video just based on the title alone so to you uh fuck you and to the rest of people who are still watching hopefully we can clear up some of the things so today we're going to talk about ballistic stretching now i'm going to start with a quote by mel sif it's paraphrasing slightly but you can probably find it in super training there is no such thing as a dangerous exercise. There is only exercises done dangerously. Now, we're gonna put that into context. So, first off with ballistic stretching, we need a working definition of what actually is ballistic stretching. So, ballistic stretching is using momentum to overcome our passive range of motion. So, just in the same way that if we if I had never squatted before, say for example, and I went into a gym and I said to myself, Emmett, you're a strong guy, why don't you stick 200 kilos on that bar and squat it? By the time I'd unracked the bar, if I'd never squatted before, I'd be lying on the floor, clutching my spine with a load of plates on top of me. Not an enjoyable experience. Whereas if I'd done the smart thing and put a bar on my back and worked up over the course of years to squatting 200 kilos, my injury risk would be effectively zero. Same thing with ballistic stretching. Now, we don't want to use our full speed immediately in these type of stretches. Now, I'm going to talk about the couple of types, different types of ballistic stretching we have, but we don't go full speed of the thing. If we can use a teeny tiny little bit of momentum to move us half a centimeter to one centimeter further in a stretch, then we can normally achieve in a passive range of motion, we have made a gain. We don't need to go a massive distance beyond it, but we can. But we don't need to use that much momentum, we can go slow. So we have two types of ballistic stretching in my mind anyway. We have one, which is the most common type I use, the pulsing type, where we're getting into our end range, we're backing just out of the stretch and pulling in. And pulsing type of stretching, these are great. You're going in, out, in, out. High frequency, generally about 60 beats a minute. Then we also have the fire and forget type of ballistic stretch where we try and say, do a high kick as high as we can. Now, for the pulsing type, in all these ballistic stretches, we set a couple of rules. We can achieve maximum safety and maximum gains. Now, with all of these, we need to have a little target to reach that one tells us we've gone beyond our passive range of motion, but two acts like a little stop that we can't go further than we intend to, thus limiting it. So if we were to do a high kick, I could place my hands slightly above my kicking range, so warm up, figure out where the stretch comes on, place your hands just there, so you're kicking into your hands, thus limiting your stretch from going further and further into a zone that could possibly be dangerous, whether it is dangerous or not. It's very difficult actually if you go into PubMed or you go into all these injury reports places to find an actual injury from ballistic stretching. All we know is that people shit themselves about it and we can't really back it up with the science. So we also have the pulsing type. Pulsing type, you're gonna bear this in mind, I'm gonna be doing a lot of videos on exercises using this because it's literally the most productive, fastest, and most maintainable form of flexibility I've discovered. Some of you might've seen my Instagram where I tap my toe on my head in the front bend. I can now get out of bed in the morning and put my toe on my head, essentially within about three minutes of waking up. I've never achieved that with other forms of stretching, say with my hip flexors have loosened up massively using these type of stretches. So it's the same idea. With these forward bend stretches, we're using a target. So I'm using my fist, I'm using something on the floor to reach that I'm touching. And that's also limiting my range of motion to stop me going beyond it. Also my speed of bounces, we're using 
anywhere between 40 and 80 beats a minute. So we're bouncing in, holding, bounce, hold. There's another type that I haven't used specifically myself, but I have seen some good results coming from it. You might want to get on that too. I know uh, Justin from Well-Rounded Athlete has mentioned them on his Instagram of pulsing in and then using the pulse to overcome a stretch and then holding that stretch for 10, 15 seconds. It's where to go. There's no set rules on how to do this. It's just what works in this. Now, my own suspicion on the pulsing type of stretching is if we get into stretching in terms of classification of Thomas Kerr's, we have passive stretching and we also have passive stretching to your pain limit or beyond your pain limit. So we have our, we can stretch into our pain limit where we won't let ourselves go further. With the pulsing type of stretching, we can go into that zone where if I was to push you into it, it would hurt too much for you to maintain that stretch. Whereas if we go in, we're in there for a second, we're out. We're in for a second, we're out. We're in for a second, we're out. We can build up a lot of time in that new painful range of motion, but without one, building up a bit of scaredness to the pain, and two, without spending a lot of time in that we get, well, we spend a lot of time cumulatively, but not a lot of time in one chunk. So it's very effective. That's my quick rundown on ballistic stretching. In terms of safeness, in terms of studies, I coach more people in a week than most of these studies have as a thing. I've been doing this for years. My injury rate from this is zero. I've never injured anyone from doing this properly. I've never had one of my students who's a bit retarded. They are sometimes. Sorry if you're listening, guys. But uh, I've never had them injure themselves when they're training by themselves using this. So... I am very certain it's safe. Give them a go. I will be posting these exercises, including the fabled how to get your toe in your nose, stretching, that's coming up in the next month. And welcome back to Emmett's Blackboard.